So, hello. I've got my, I'm sitting in my bed, so if you hear it, it's really old and creaky. Anyway, um, so there's a couple different ways you can do rune readings, and, um, so you can, it's hard to do it one hand. Should have made some tea. My throat scratchy. Scratchy. Anyway. Alright, so you can... I knitted this, by the way. Isn't this lovely? Alright, so you can pull them one by one. And lay them out. Okay. You can throw them. So you would... Or you can, no, wait, you can dump them out, flip them all over, <laughs> it takes a while. This is why I like the flat ones, because if they're like round, they'll flip over, but, so you flip them all over, and you shuffle them like, you can't tell what's what, okay, the ones that have flipped over, you flip them back over. You should probably do this with two hands. And then you just like pick the ones that you want to read. So I would pick this one. And this one. And you would lay them out like just like a tarot. You would lay them out in a spread. Or um, what I'm going to do for you. Put it down real quick. Is you take them in your hand, or in your pouch, but I like in my hand. You shake them up, and like dice, you kind of just like throw them. And yours went kind of everywhere. So, <laughs> um, and then I'll show you here in a minute what they look like. And it's kind of better to do rune readings on hard surfaces, not soft surfaces, for this reason. Okay. Alright. So, the ones that are in group, that are grouped together. Hold on. Okay. The ones that are grouped together, like these, you would read together. These, you would read together. And these are kind of like outside influences. This is what's important right now. Is this right here. So um, some of them don't have upside down meanings. Um, so what I do is just like a book. Left to right. Top to bottom. So let's see. I haven't done a rune reading in a while. So I'm just going to flip them all over. Because I kind of don't feel... Like, them being upside down is important right now. Um. Hmm. That's interesting. Okay. Alright, so I got my, my big ass book. Let's see. Alright. Uh, let's show no one read first. Runes are just, yeah, the runes are very blunt. Okay, yeah, Ken eyes. So, Ken eyes. No, I want to read these together. Okay, so this one is Othila, which is family. This one is Hagalaz, which means, um, hail or, um, Yeah, hail or natural disaster. This is Burkina, which is birth. This is Rado, which is, um, it means horse or movement. And this is Giba, which is gift. So, this, everything is all circled around your journey. Okay. Um, there is some natural disaster right now, but it's going to birth something. So, um, 
I'm just going to read what Rado means first. So it means um, movement, mobility, journey, and progression. You're about to embark on a journey, either physical, world, or journey of your soul, to heal something that needs healing. Okay. And then there's um, Burkina. And that means birth, nurturing, fertility, and family. Um, it, and to the Norse people, trees were very important. So it also means birch tree, goddess, to be prepared, to take in what you, what you do. It references to your family and your home life. So your family and your home life, you actually might be moving. Um, I know y'all, and this, this is actually just means ancestors and family. So I'm going to read Hagalaz, which is hail, storm, chaos, destruction, limitations, natural disaster, hazard, fury, drama, and anger. Enemies, destructive forces, forces of nature, and things that are out of your control. So your journey right now is out of your control. Um, and this also means gods. This is actually Odin's rune. So this is Gibo. This is gift. And um, it's your talents, a generosity, charity, and partnership. And it means harmonic relationships, unity with self and others, especially with higher self, nurture, and all things around you. So you're, you're a very nurturing person, but you need that nurturing back. Okay, and um, this Gibo also means the gifts that you give to other people. So the gifts of your generosity and your kindness and your friendship. Okay, this is Othila. If I can find it in my book. Othila. Othila. Um, legacy, what is passed down, heirloom, um, land, can be a building, inheritance, possessions, traits, something of stable value, and things that we pass on. And also means you will feel free, ancestral property, you will inherit from someone or receive an inheritance. But really, this just means family. It could be family traits, like you look like someone... Or, um, you know, like Megan inherited her uncle's house. So, you know, that it's a f familiar gift. All right. And then I'll read these because these seem to kind of, these three seem to kind of, they're associated with your journey, but they're kind of, not the most important things right now. These five together. So what... Okay, so with Mercury going into retrograde. Um, Mercury in retrograde is actually a good thing because it can be a reflection. It can be a time to pause and reflect on um, where you've been, where you're going... Um, but when Mercury goes out of retrograde, you have to deal with all your shit, um, once it's out of retrograde, once it goes, they call it going direct. So, this is Kina's, and I can't remember off the top of my head what Kina's means. Excuse me, I'm not tired. Kina's is, oh yeah, opening. Creative, cre creativity, creative fire, work, toil, and hard work. Uh, it can be a beacon or a torch when you feel in the dark. This room will bring an opening to help you open, be open to who you are in your highest possibilities from darkness, light will come. And that also goes along with Sawilo. And Sawilo, um... No, that's not Suilo. That's Awas, and that means yew tree. Um, and you think of a yew tree, um, that's what they used to make bows and arrows out of. So, it it's something is constricted. 
Um, and I feel like it's saying your creativity is constricted. Um, uh, you're protecting yourself. So when, you know, when it's, you see how these are kind of like turned in. So Wilo is the one that's very open. That's like this. So Awas being kind of turned in on itself is being, it's almost protecting yourself, um, but you persevere. So it means stability. You're doing the right thing. Patience, perseverance, endurance, the right way to get things accomplished. So, um, you know, like we were talking earlier about, well, this isn't fair. And, uh, you know, I really could be going out and doing whatever I want, but really I'm doing the right thing, but I'm getting accused of doing the wrong thing. Um, because you you know that even if you went out and did whatever you did, that wouldn't make things any better. That you are finally at a point where you're like, I'm going to be the noble person that I, I'm supposed to be. All right. And then, um, this is Pertho, which is actually a pretty cool one. No, that's not Pertho. Um, that's, I know what it means. It means victory. Winjo. Winjo's victory. Um, it actually looks like a, like a victory flag. Um, it's just positive success. Um, uh, time to celebrate. You've been productive. Um, things will be productive. And upright means bliss and glory. Peace and pleasure, self-worth, joy and serenity. Um, happy result, harmony and prosperity. So once you get out of this you know, journey or whatever, this happiness is there for you, um, and, and it's a possibility for your future. Um, I feel like this right here is imminent. This is like immediate. This is like right now. These things are on your journey. And then these things I kind of feel like are going to be what's up for your future. Um, and it's interesting that you got these two together. So, this one is, the thing that trips me up about, um, about runes is that sometimes they look a lot alike. So, this is Manas, and Manas is, is man. So, this would signify you. This is you in the, in the bigger picture. This is you. Um, it... It also means what makes you unique, what sets you apart from everyone else. Um, it's the nature of humanity and the self. It's your place in the collective consciousness of humanity. That we are all a part of the collective unconscious. We are all one. Your attitude towards others and their attitude towards you. Take time for personal reflection. And I think you're doing that. Um, and this is AWAS. And this means horse. And... The reason why this rune is a really important one is because horses are so incredibly important to Norse people because that's how they got to and fro. So you've got Rido, which is your spiritual journey, and then you've got uh, Awas, which is um, a physical journey. So you're going to you're going to be traveling a lot, um, and it's going to be near water. And this is Lagos. Now Lagos means water. It also can mean something that's cleansing. Um, some, and it can also mean a feminine person. Um, it can signify your intuition, prophetic dreams, and any dowsing, which is what this is, um, is dowsing. Um, and it also means your emotions. It can represent the moon, the flow of emotions, and all things into the collective unconscious, which is interesting that you got this, these two together. Um. All bodies of water, feminine energies, your higher mind, your spirituality, your health and healing. And it's a time of cleansing. So, um, and this one is thurry size, which means thorn. So, you're, you're going to have to cut away, um, kind of being a sheep. You're going to have to embrace what makes you, you a unique person. Even though you've been hurt with this. Um, and this also just means something that's just painful. A thorn in your side. Something that you that um, 
It could also mean hammer, something that chips away at your, um, that chips away at your, your just your being. It can also mean anger and violence. You, you can be angry, but I see that um, you're going to have to cleanse that, angry, that anger away. Um, it can turn into a weapon if you let it. So it's the seeing of the future, opening the door gate to see the future, um, reflection for action, protection. You will see the truth. So the truth will come out about a feminine person. And this is Algis, which is probably my favorite um, rune. And that means elk or antler. It's protection. It's self-defense. Um, it can also mean your spirit guide, someone that supports you, advocacy, standing for something or someone, or and stability and safety. It can mean good fortune, new influences, Connecting with spirit and walking and working through your issues. So you're going on this You're gonna be traveling But I feel like this is really talking about Your your marriage and You know, it's saying that this feminine person has hurt you But you can protect yourself, but th this pain that you're feeling it's going to have to be cleansed away for you to have this happiness. Um, and it's going to have to be cleansed away, not soon, but eventually. Um, and what I can also do is, um, I wish I had my Lenormand cards. Shit. <laughs> I need to order another deck of Lenormand cards. Um, and what I want to do is I want to do, um... See, like I said, when when runes are done talking, they're done talking. Um, so yeah, this is right now. This is it, things that are influencing right now, and this is going to be probably uh, by the end of the year, probably. Um, but what I can do is the reason I like to combine tarot, oracle, um, pendulum. Well, I like to combine all those things is because. If you put together runes in an oracle, that's really good. If you do Lenormand, Lenormand actually, okay, tarot is more about your mental state and your mental, your mental challenges. Lenormand can actually tell you what to look for in the physical realm. It can actually tell you you're going to have car troubles. Um, there's going to be... Um, like one of the cards, it can actually signify a person with glasses. <laughs> um, it can say you're going to have problems at work or you're going to come into money. You're going to, or it could say that, you know, um, you're going to come into a little bit of money. It can tell you if it's going to be a lot of money. Um, so Lenormand is more about your physical realm. Runes are, are always about, you know, because like I was telling you about Odin, um, runes are always about, nine times out of ten, about your spiritual journey. And it's always, to me, it's always good to get um, runes and tarot together. Because runes can only tell you so much. Tarot can kind of further explain it. So I'm stop talking because my throat is starting to hurt. Um... I probably talk pretty fast, so you might need to watch this a couple times, but let me know if you have any questions. I think I didn't explain this very well. Anyway, I hope you're having a great day, and I'll talk to you later.